Hi, welcome to Kaiser Traffic Safety Bikeways Pedestrian Safety Meeting. And uh, we've got one guest in our audience. Would you like to come forward and say anything today? Very good. What's your name, officer? Welcome. And you've been with Kaiser for a couple days now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. If you've been here 26 years, how long are you going to be around? <laughs> he looks like a young man. So. Yes, he <laughs> looks very young. He must have started when you were 12. <laughs> Has everyone had a chance to uh, review the minutes from September? Oh, I would like to say they've asked me back in the back where they record. Don't turn your microphones off. Leave them on the whole time, all the time. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, so everyone's approved or have has reviewed the minutes. Uh, can we agree to approve the minutes? I move that we approve the minutes from what, September, September 13th meeting. Second. We've got a second from Kathy. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes from September uh, last month, uh, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. I abstain. I abstain since I was not at that meeting. Ditto. Okay, so Hirsch and Joe <coughs> abstained. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, item number four. We've already introduced our guest, uh, appearance of interested citizens. Um, House Bill 2017, Safe Routes to School. Uh, let me give you an update on what I know. Um, uh, Pat Fisher has produced the um, application worksheet for uh, Cummings Elementary. And I've produced the application worksheet for Kennedy Elementary. Both of these been, have been sent to uh, Public Works. Um, the, tomorrow, October 12th, is the deadline for submitting our proposals. And uh, Bill Lawyer says he will make sure both of those get submitted. So he'll be uh, working, he'll, take, he'll be taking the information that we provided for him on the worksheets and putting that into the uh, online application for both projects. Uh, for both um, projects, Cummings and Elementary, I had requested a letter of support from the superintendent of the Kaiser, um, Salem Kaiser school district and I've received letters from both of them and uh, so has Bill Lawyer so he can add that to the application. We've got uh, several letters for Cummings. We've got at least one letter for Kennedy, a letter of support. Um, which should be the one that we need from the school superintendent. So they'll be requested tomorrow, or the applications go in uh, no later than tomorrow. And then we wait a few months for the ODOT uh, evaluation team to make their decision. And uh, let's hope for good things on both our projects. <laughs> Anything uh, team members want to add about House Bill 2017? The uh, Safe Routes to School projects that we've been working on. Um, let's move on to item number five, Verta Lane speed reduction request. Uh, David Dempser, and, uh, can you bring us up to speed on what's going there? on there? This large volume, God, it's huge. I, I had to print, I do it larger so I can read it at home. <laughs> I like it. Anyway, <laughs> and, I, and I, was, I do maybe things differently than some of you, but the, the problem was, just to review real quickly, was a complaint about the, high speed and volume of traffic on Verda was making it um, difficult for people to get their mail. Okay. 
uh, and the rest of this is just facts. And I think we've gone over them. Uh, speed limit's 35 miles an hour. Um, it's two lane with a bike lane most of the way. Stop the stop sign at Dearborn on the Verde Lane. <coughs> this traffic circle then uh, the stop sign at Dearborn. The next is a traffic signal at the parkway. At the, right at the parkway, I think it's five lanes, four or five lanes there. It going right at turn lane, left turn lane, through lane, a bunch of stuff. It's pretty wide. Um, easement at that end is probably around, I'm guessing now, Mike, about 60 feet at the north, south end. And when you get up towards the traffic circle in Dearborn, it's probably 40 feet easement. It gets a lot narrower. Ditches around, no sidewalks at the north end. So anyway, all of that's just listed. The, the key I see is that the, the Mid Willamette Valley Planning Council of whatever, Governments. Council group, of Governments. You know all that Council, Council yeah. of Government yes. has approved with by working with Kaiser that Verda is to become uh, one of our arterials. It's supposed to uh, depends upon which plan you're reading, but um, the most optimistic is it's supposed to be widened to three lanes, one each way and a left turn lane. Bike lanes on both sides, sidewalks on both sides. And Mike, you said that would take about 60 feet? Right. Right. That's the plan. It's been approved in a, by the city, by the Council of Governments, by Marion County, by... Okay. It's on an immediate track to be done. Like I, talking to different people, it looks like within about four years, within four years. That's, that's just a fact. And uh, I suppose it could be stopped somehow. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how, but Funny. you can do all sorts of appeals and things. Funny. Uh, I went up there. I, you know, traffic is uh, perceptual, how bad it is. So I've spent, I've been up there now three times waiting around across the street. At rush hour, about where the... Uh, problem occurs at rush hour, five o'clock, you could wait up to almost two and a half minutes because when the signal turns at the parkway, you get a, you could get a big stream of traffic. Okay. And then the ones coming the other way all went through the stop sign. So they're kind of periodic. So sometimes there's two or three in a row and then none for a while. I didn't have any problem crossing either way. I don't know what I tried to walk as slow as I could, but, uh, <laughs> and that was at the worst time. So uh, there may be, I'm sure, moments when you might have to wait. I, I doubt anybody waited five minutes to cross the street, but that could happen, theoretically. Went and talked to the post office. They said they, all sorts of things are possible. Theoretically, you could move all the mailboxes to the west side of Verda. Not the other blind. He's saying, "Well, this is possible, but it's not going to happen. Nobody wants to do that. They'd have to get approval. It'd have to be some more reason than one person doing it." They said, um, "Probably, they would never do anything until the road development on Verda is done. So once the sidewalks are in." Now, here's another little thing: the new rule regarding mailboxes is that the mailbox uh, can't be on a sidewalk like they are all through Kaiser. I, I have them in my house, but the mailbox actually blocks part of the sidewalk. Now they have to be on the house side of the sidewalk. And so if you do a big development and you put your sidewalks and curbs and then bike, you know, parking and bike lanes and all that stuff, then the boxes have to be on the other side of the sidewalk. Now, if you put in a swale or something between the curb and the sidewalk, theoretically, they could go in there. Planning strip. Right. But that has to be approved not only by three different layers of post office bureaucracy. And 
the letter carriers union because if you put something in that causes them a lot of it changes their work then they get a say in whether or not it's approved so just toss that out um, you could put in but now they only want cluster boxes and so you could put in a cluster box he said on right now on the west side of the street so these people wouldn't have to cross Verda small one has 12 boxes the big one has 16 they're about fifteen hundred dollars and the resident has to assume that all of that plus installation the where I think I'm not sure exactly where the complaint occurred but if you put in a 16 box uh, cluster box for mail on the west side of the street that means some people are going to have to walk over two blocks to get their mail but they'll be on, they won't have to cross the street and everybody has to agree on it on this so you have to have a hundred percent agreement of the residents to switch to a cluster box and then you could probably get the post office to deliver it one person doesn't want to walk two blocks to get their mail so I think you're out of line so anyway last page real quick just things we could do do nothing that's an op, op always an op. <laughs> Don't even bother to send it on to the city. Um, the residents, and it would kind of, we'll let them know that the residents would need to get together, get cooperation of all the other residents, put in a cluster box, petition the post office for the cluster box, petition for delivery on the west side of the highway. The cluster box, I would guess with a $1,500 cluster box and getting it installed and so on, probably around two grand, uh, at least $100 a piece, probably more. And as soon as the road's developed, they have to change it, get a new one. Um, there are three mailboxes on the west side of Verda near um, the parkway. The guy doesn't know why they're there how they ever got there or why they're still delivering because the mail delivery goes north on Verda and zigzags all back through all the neighborhoods and they get all the way down they come out of Dearborn and go south on Verda back home so they drive right by the houses that they won't deliver to hmm. because it, whatever they, whatever their reasoning was at the time um, my thought was the last thing is that when Mike and his public works decides to do Verda that they notify the residents and, it, and those residents at that time should petition the city to put in the cluster box is that you understand mm -hmm. what I mean it's otherwise it wouldn't cost them anything we're going to put a cluster box on the west side of the highway for all those road for those people petition the post office but since the road is widened, it's going to be a lot easier to deliver mail than before. They have a, the city could could pay for that. Or as a project. Right? As part of the project. I mean, that would be an option, is to wait until that development occurs. But we don't know how long that's going to be. No. David, I have a question. If, if this is kind of off the wall, but uh, if the, they petitioned the city, would they still have to have 100% Participation, I don't, or is that only a, a no? I don't. I think it? at that point, I think the city would tell people what's going to happen. <laughs> Mike would just say, "We're putting a cluster box in," and because the road's going to be a lot wider, mm -hmm. you know, I would. Trevor, would you guess that because it's now three lanes and bike lanes, people might go a little faster. Once it's improved. Once I've the road's improved and wider, and but they'll also have. A place where they can cross halfway and wait, and then cross the other mm -hmm. half. Yeah, that's true. Correct. Take it all out. But you can. All you're doing is petitioning. You know, the guy wasn't real optimistic about getting a lot of changes done to postal routes. But he said you can. It's you too. your do, your <laughs> job to try if you want. So that's what it, he said. If it was him, he'd have got a post office box. About five, four to five bucks a month. I think it's sixteen dollars for three months. Three months, four months. So, uh, anybody else? Have this option 
B, what, is that the one that requires also the letter carriers uh, uh, to, to weigh in on that? You bet. Mm -hmm. That's the and one. he didn't think it would, he, he might approve it if you went all the data it was in, but then he has to talk to his boss, the Salem postmaster, who then has to talk to the regional postmaster who has to talk to the next one up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it seemed to me like the reason for all this mailbox issues was because of the speed on the street. Yep. So um, then we're still not dealing with that, but I guess you know, if we have to go to ODOT to do it, I don't know. I think, uh, but, uh, but I bet the city would do it if the residents who are complaining would pay for the ODOT study. But I suspect <laughs> it's kind of spendy. I, do you know how much it is, Mike? No, I don't. Did, but didn't we, didn't we look at that last time when it kind of decided that, the, that most people are driving a reasonable yeah. speed and then there's just a few like people that are going crazy with high speeds at night when well, there's the probably not people out going getting... Yeah, the average the was about, about the speed limit, about 38 miles an hour, I 34. think, wasn't it? Average, and then there were some who would just jack. The 85th percentile was pretty close. The 85th to the percentile limit. was below the, the actual speed limit. Okay. Uh, those going over the speed limit, the average was 38. So three oh, okay. miles over the speed limit. Of those who were traveling over the speed limit, they were going three miles over the speed limit. Mike brought up a point, de Blasio brought up a point about that and asked whether when you did that study, did you have the big signboard up there and say you are going, here's no. your speed? Okay. Because in, in that case, I could maybe lower mm -hmm. your. Correct. Steer. We did. Mike okay. did it in October of 16. That was during the school year, and we found that we had, if I am going from memory, 60 some thousand vehicles come through. I did it this year because uh, the residents were concerned that the the lighting for the school zones were affecting speeds. So I did it before school year started, and we had half the traffic at about 30. It was 34,985 vehicles. So just shy of 35,000, uh, and it's just an indiscriminate beige box that's attached to a pole that works off of radar. Okay. I mean, the study that Mike uses or the, the equipment that he uses use pressure uh, lines, and those are pretty obvious. You have to drive over them. This box, you would, I mean, even if you were looking for it, you probably wouldn't know what you're looking for. Okay. So there is no. Thanks for telling us what they look like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't. I've been very vague in even that description. So. Where it is, we don't know where they're hiding them either. Okay. So we're really talking about human perception. Yep, right. That's my conclusion. The the studies show that it's more of a perception <laughs> issue. And as I have talked to our folks um, and to other citizens, when you're standing on the side of a roadway in a bicycle lane or traveling in a bicycle lane as a cyclist, as most of you are, and a car comes through at 25 in a 25 mile an hour speed zone, within a few feet of you, it does feel like they are going super fast. And in reality is, no, it's just you are very close in proximity. You don't have the protection that the car does. And, and so, yeah, it, it does become a perception issue because the data does not show that we have a speeding problem. We have an acute problem, but it doesn't matter if it's Verda, River Road, Dearborn. I mean, we're going to have those folks that are going to speed regardless of what the speed is, regardless of what the repercussions are when they get caught. It's just, that's what they're going to do. And we are developing traffic police program, right? Correct. We will have come okay. mid Okay. Well, that's that's part of the always the solution is enforcement. So there was a there was an email that came out. I don't know if this is the right time, but Mayor Clark had an email sent Bus. from uh, a, a citizen and my response did not come to the committee, but it went directly to the mayor and basically letting her know that, you know, this is a prime example of when funding gets cut and resources start to dwindle, such as not having a traffic team, there's what's the repercussion for speeding in Kaiser when there's nobody around to catch you, um, <laughs> and that's changing. Uh, so I reassured her that in the next six-ish weeks, we will have three officers 
Uh, and, and her, that particular complaint revolved around the school bus violations on River Road. Uh, and that's, um, we know that's an issue, uh, but when we only have police officers who are on patrol, patrolling and handling calls for service, unfortunately traffic tends to be a lower priority uh, than responding to actual citizen complaints. But as you said, Hirsch, that is changing. We will have a traffic team. Yeah. I'm glad next. you brought up the, about the, the bus issue because I've even heard it from a member of, this, of the bike club who's a bus driver said, I hate ri driving on River Road just because of the, they don't, the red lights come on and may, maybe one lane or two lanes, but not the far lanes stop. So enforcement, okay. Okay, so. I don't know what you want to do with this information. It's just information. My thought. Do you uh, I think we need a recommendation? Uh, Joe, Joe Scott. Joe? Um, I guess if Council of Governments is looking at pushing this into a high priority, because four years does seem awfully quick. Um, Actually, they did it in 2012. Okay, so. So they were doing forward. 10 years down the line. Okay. Is, is this project in the, Mike? Uh, the stip, I was do you know if is this project already in the in the stip? I just know it's it's coming down the pike here, but I, as far as the timeline, have an assigned the next five year years, or money. That's his, that's his right. best guess. So mm -hmm. Scats is redoing the stip right now, so and I can look at that and let people okay. know if you want it. That's okay. the 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 list of transportation projects that's yeah. being funded in the right. area. In the next. I guess if we can just get a look at the plans or you know the programming to it and I'm I guess I'm looking at in my mind the area of Hawthorne from Silverton to Portland Road and say okay can we imitate that on Verda and that automatically brings the speeds down it gives us almost exactly what was described in lane widths and bike paths and whatnot so where we go with that or how we go about that I don't know that's a, part, so. uh, a three lane with yeah. sidewalks and did they put any like um, special any pedestrian islands at critical points or there's at least one that I can think mm -hmm. of they're going across to the uh, Northgate Park Park. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. and they have 25 mile per hour on the whole length of it which it surprises me but it impresses me that most of the time people seem to be doing mm -hmm. it so there is a school zone too, right, in that area. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember. The Hall, Hallman Elementary is right, right over on that area. I can't see the school, but there is. It's, it's a, a pink, pink school. Short school zone. Yeah. Okay. It's right there by the curb. <laughs> okay. Uh, on the um, mailboxes, whether the city, you know, I, I think if the city does, and the Council of Governments does the build. I think the issue about the uh, mailboxes should come up, should Definitely. have a discussion. Uh, trying to get mailboxes just on my old street because we had the old style phone and we, sub several of us wanted to get the kind that uh, David describes. You literally have to have everyone agree. If you have just one saying no, the post office will not move forward. So, I think you reinforce that, David. <laughs> As a committee, do we want to uh, support any of these uh, possible solutions? Well, I think well, I think last time we we said that we were taking no act. We didn't exactly take no action because mm -hmm. David put some good put the good work into looking into this. So, I mean, I, I guess I kind of echo what Hirsch was. I think that the message would be to the neighborhood that we, we, we do recognize, acknowledge, acknowledge well, the that there is some uh, concern there to be, to be addressed, but that, the bet, that it should be done in conjunction with the, the, um, the widening of the road. So we don't have to do, do things twice. Okay. okay, which could be like four to five years or. Mike, I have a question for Mike. Do you have a wall at work or somewhere that says 
three years from now I need to look at this piece of paper? Okay. <laughs> no. Is there any way that we can make sure that this document is put somewhere that gets reviewed when the, a pro, uh, uh, the Virgil Lane project does come up? I, I will file it and I can say um, when it comes to the, the central box units and whatnot, I know on both the Shamal and Northeast project and the Shamal and North project, those boxes were just incorporated in the project. I'm not sure how they got there, but I know they were part of the project, so I'm pretty sure that on something the size of the Verda expansion, that that will be something that will happen at that at that time. Well, we might be looking at a larger issue if there's multiple occurrences of this type of mailbox on the wrong side of the street in other parts of the city. Um, are there any other occurrences or do we want to change the whole city policy of how we do mailboxes or <laughs> <laughs> I do think we need to respond to the two gentlemen, was it two gentlemen who complained? Dr. Rohila, yeah. We need to send them a letter with something. Well, but those emails were. Yeah. I know, I, but we're not going to be them. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. And I don't know who it was that uh, Councillor Freeman talked to. It was at, at the uh, night, out. night Out thing, yeah. 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 I don't know who they were. <laughs> okay. But we know who this is, who so is we could send them a letter. What? Who, who mm -hmm. is? Who Verda, the people on So Verda. that is something that I took on last oh, month. Oh, you know who they I am are. taking care of that. That's right. Though one of the things that I, so that's that's on my job, or that's on my list of things to do, hmm. but I didn't, I have not made contact yet because, as I mentioned last month, we had a challenge with the software program cutting off some of the data. And I wanted to be able to have that fixed so that I can show that the complete data. I can show it in a document, a word pad that's, I mean, yeah. it's hyperbole, but you know, 700 pages long. But I want to be able to show it on that chart that I gave to the committee uh, last month where it sh breaks down the speed and also the time of day. Mm -hmm. And so since that time, uh, unfortunately, yeah, well, Yes, I did get promoted, moved to a different job, and so I'm about a week behind on a lot of my emails. Stalker, Radar, or Stalker who is the manufacturer of the data collector, has uh, come back with a fix to that. So all I have to do now is go into the program, do the updates, and that, oh. that data should be there. Um, unfortunately, and I apologize, it just, I haven't got, it's been a lower priority. But I told Councillor Freeman uh, and Chief John Teague that that is going to be my responsibility to reach out to those folks uh, and show them the data. Um, I'm not, um, I'm not so sure that they're going to be accepting of that because when I show them the data that uh, Mike produced back in '16, they didn't believe the data. Uh, it was evident in the emails that I provided last month that they they did not agree with the assessment that there's not a problem there. Um, Would there be any point in Trevor showing this or part of this document to them? It's. I mean, there's no conclusions. Leave it. that to your discretion. What do you think? <laughs> Is there any, I don't know if there's any information in there that would be. Well, you considering. Say that we did discuss it thoroughly. Considering that we are now televised and it's on <laughs> it's public record, I would be more than happy to, yeah. when I go sit down with them, to show them my data. And I'm giving them my data. I can also give them what the council or what this committee has talked about. Yeah. As Thank long you. as I've got your permission to do so, I will certainly do that. Yeah. I just yeah. need that from you, Chair Fry. Good idea. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, they may not. It really wasn't anything to agree or disagree. No, I'm trying just to cover all the basically yeah. just giving uh, the citizens that have a concern some. This feedback. is what we discussed yeah. and decided yeah. not to do anything for a while. Is that okay with you, Chair Fry? Yes, uh, we'll have our police liaison, uh, Sergeant Winning, uh, follow up with the people about the mail. Long term, we'll uh, try to include this discussion as part of the Verda expansion project. Okay. Did I capture that? Okay. We had uh, someone come into the room. Uh, sir, did you want to say anything today? Okay. Well, welcome. This is. I'm a retired public works director. I'm also a retired city engineer. Also a retired traffic engineer. Right? County surveyor. I've been 
back to engineer for the city of Las Vegas. And Sir, if you're going to testify, you should go up where the microphone is so that I'm we can. Well, <laughs> well, okay. No, if you're going to talk, if nobody in the, in the, on television can hear you when you're talking from here, so we need you to sit up there where the microphone is. Please. Every item that you brought up that I could see has a solution. The concern that I have is that to educate everybody on the bench is an enormous job. And there's nobody here that can educate everybody on the bench as to solutions to these problems. Uh, who would do that? Would the director of public works do that? No, he's not licensed. So he can't make recommendations dealing with traffic items. That's a violation of the state law if he does. So, I, you know, I could do it, but I'm going to tell you a story. And you're not going to believe this story. That's okay. And you can check this story. Years ago, uh, when I retired, I went to, I filled out an application to this committee to be on this committee here, the Traffic Safety Committee. I went before that volunteer coordinating committee. Is mm -hmm. that what it's called? Mm -hmm. And one of the members of that committee uh, was a realtor who came to my house prior, like two weeks prior. And I asked her for a study or what do they call that, a courtesy appraisal on the house. And she gave me a courtesy appraisal and wanted to know what the plan was. At that time, my wife and I did, really didn't have a plan, but we said that we were looking for something that was a little bit larger with more acreage. That member used her influence to get a no vote from me, even though I stood up and explained my experience and my certificates to them. So I got a no vote. Or else I'd probably be sitting on this committee today. That I don't think was very fair, but that's what happened. And so I just walked out and said, hey, heck with it. Well, I'm now at a point in my time that uh, you know, I'm pretty much settled where I am. I, I live on Alder Drive, and I'm happy there, and so is my wife, and we don't plan on moving at all. So I don't know exactly what to do at this time other than my conscience telling me that this city needs help in the worst way. Having been a county engineer and a director of public works, and what I am seeing in the field is an enormous problem. Enormous. Lack of professionalism? Yes. I can take any one of you members and take any street in this city and point out the derogatories. That's not my ambition to do that. What we have is, is, I guess, people making decisions that really don't know what they're doing and making those decisions. You need to get the facts, and the facts need to come from staff. You people should not be out there getting those facts. It should come to you in the form of what's known as an SRA, Situation Recommendation and Analysis which staff does the legwork and tells you what the laws are, what's being done, and how to solve those problems. Right now, I don't see anything on this list that can't be solved based upon conversations you have. It, it's not that hard, but you have to have the experience and the professional certificates in order to make those recommendations. Input. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put anybody down or anything like that. that. That's not what I'm here for. I'm just here 
make you aware that there's somebody in this city that cares, that has a professionalism and its certifications to make the recommendations to this committee. And it should be staff. They're not doing it. And I don't know why. <laughs> Anybody answer why? Well, this committee is all volunteers. Um, but volunteers yeah, so should make their recommendations based upon facts. And we uh, try to do our research. And your own fact-finding. You shouldn't be doing that fact-finding. You should be making the recommendations based on somebody else doing that fact-finding. So when we, step. when we do our basic, <clears throat> as you call it, fact-finding, the committee makes recommendations to the city council who then, because this committee cannot ask city staff to do work. It has to come from city council. So when we look at the basics, we bring that to city council. City council then can direct staff to go and actually get the facts that you're speaking of. But this committee can't do that. It should, it, it should be working a little bit differently. That the request should be coming in to staff. And staff then puts it on your agenda for discussion. From the city SRA. council. Huh? From the city the council. council. Directions from the city council to do the research. Mm -hmm. I don't know how these requests are coming to you. Usually it's. I mean, it, it's not coming to you directly. Hopefully, it's coming in through staff. Well, and staff is just shoving it on you. I think the no, it doesn't no. wear around. The general citizens have All been, have been encouraged to, if they see well, problems around town, that's to bring it to the committee. It shouldn't first. work like that. Well, that's the way, it, that's the way it's designed. That's the way the committees are set up. In Kaiser. <laughs> so it goes by resolution. public committee, city council. Uh, well, then there's, a, there's something wrong with that. Well, maybe well, you should go to a council meeting and, and tell them then. That would be because a it, it, Kaiser has only been a city since 1982. So a lot of the traffic issues that you may see were inherited. Mm -hmm. And some of the streets not poorly designed. This was old county rural. Mm -hmm. And then when the city became a, a, a city, a lot of the uh, city ordinances, policies were based on keeping things cheap, keeping the price low, keeping things flowing, and keeping it where uh, we have less staff and more volunteers. That's the heart of Kaiser, where volunteers do a lot of work. We have some great staff, but we don't have a lot of them. And that's the way Kaiser has been set up. Uh, I've been involved with the bike, bicycle stuff all over the United States. And I, I just was down in Reno. So I, uh, a few weeks ago, and got to talk with some of the bike people down there. So they have things that we'd love in Kaiser, but we don't want to spend that kind of money. We don't want to hire that kind of staff. Therefore, this is what we have. It's kind of an oxymoron. Yeah, I think the, the difference, the, the I cliches. understand, because I worked on other uh, commissions. You have to realize this goes from, like the guy who lives on Verda to us. Or for, or for him to the city council. Or we can go to the city council before Trevor gets a request to figure out what the speeds are on Verda. That's the process. So it's different than a lot of places I've been to. It has, so if we, want, if we wanted a big study of Verda done, we could ask the city council, say this is our recommendation that this study occur and we can send that to the city council. The city council, if they approved it, would then direct public works to do it. But, I mean, that's the process we use, so it's different. It's very different. <coughs> it's antiquated. Uh, I don't know about that. But yeah, it is. <laughs> that's where the control, anyway, <coughs> so the control goes back more to the people. Than okay. okay. Well, we, uh, All right. We appreciate your input and your thoughts. 
Um, there are openings for volunteers coming up. If you want to uh, pursue this committee again. Uh, um, did you have anything else? No. Okay. Uh, we, we didn't catch your name, sir. I'm Carl. Carl, okay. Appreciate your input. Thank you for coming. Let's move on to uh, item number six, our parkway bike path signage. We discussed this before. Do we have any additional information or do we need to take some action to request some money or are we applying for a grant or? Uh, well, the, the, next, the next step I think this, yeah, this has been on the back burner for a while, but I think the next step is maybe that I uh, was, or Hirsch and I were on it, but either one or both of us would go out on site with um, public works staff to look at the, the exact locations and the, the signing messages that we developed and submitted to the, the, to the committee the last time we, that we actually discussed you this. Did. And, and um, See if, we, see if we come to agreement on number and placement of signs, and at that point, we can then also talk to the ODOT um, Region 2 traffic folks and, and determine kind of who does what, how, what, what can the city do as far as design or installation, what, could, what can ODOT do since it's on there uh, right away, and, and how we can uh, find a way to move forward. Mm -hmm. Next week is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, weather <wise. coughs> Mike, if there's any time next week, we, uh, we can meet you at the parkway. Yeah, send me an email and we'll schedule something and figure something something okay. out. I don't, it should Pat, work just fine. Does that sound good for you, yes, Pat? Yes, like, because I recently found the list of what we recommended before, <laughs> okay. so that would be helpful. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Have <laughs> thank you. Um, I have to say that I lost mine. I've researched all. I put it on a white zip drive, and I think in our move, you know, last year, it got put somewhere, and I could. So thank you, Pat. Okay, Pat. <laughs> okay, so next week, week of. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, Hirsch, Pat, and Mike, you guys will be doing some further research into that. Is that? And okay. Too. Yeah. Yes. Let's go on to uh, committee member input. Joe, do you have anything you'd like to uh, bring to, to the I committee? I guess I'll kind of segue off of this uh, parkway path stuff. So if you're going to be out there, and I don't know if this may already be well known, but there is a pretty good sized homeless camp building up in the uh, between DHS and the old castle uh, precast. So. Along, okay. along, so I'll the, leave it at that. along the parkway, the <laughs> yes. bikeway. Mm -hmm. Is is ODOT aware of it? I'm pretty sure. Okay. So if we had some signs, they would know where to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hirsch, what would you like to add to the committee? Um, I'm on the ODOT uh, Vulnerable User um, Committee, and we've been meeting for the last, well, since July each month and looking at ways and I, uh, for vulnerable users. And it's, it's uh, fascinating how the motorcycle group and the bicycle group sit together because <laughs> some of the issues for cycling and motorcycle are so, so, so much the same that we've become brothers in arms and sisters in arms on that. Also, to follow up uh, on Southeast Kaiser um, Neighborhood Association, an issue that came up at, during the Iris Festival is the blockage of Cherry Avenue. It blocked a major um, north-south bike way it blocked the Willamette Scenic Bikeway and <laughs> such. And so the, uh, the Neighborhood Association is going to be talking more and more about that, but wanted to make sure that this committee was, was aware that there 
had that concern and it was related to both pedestrians and bike facilities that maybe in the future there can be a reasonable detours and maybe even bike parking facilities at the Iris Festival. Thank you for remembering that since obviously. So do we need, do we need to um, try to have one of our, would it be our members or, or staff that, that rep, that kind of negoti negotiates a, uh, a solution to that with the, with the organizers of the festival? Well, this is, I'm no longer a, a member of the Southeast Kaiser because we moved, but my understanding is um, the president is going to be working directly. They have a council liaison working directly with them, and this is going to be an agenda item for their, it's not, ex it's going to have to be October since we ended yeah. up not having September. Yeah, the uh, meeting, so they're going to, keep bringing that and they have invited, Ken told me they invited the uh, chamber representatives. <coughs> so they got a dialogue going, but they want this committee to be aware too. So if there are issues that come up, maybe we might be able to give some input or some help. Okay. Are you, t are you talking about Ken Gerloff? Yeah. So he was invited to the Chamber of Commerce meetings uh, as well as some of the community members that had businesses along Cherry Avenue and there was only one meeting that they attended, and I typically attend most all of them, and Sergeant Lede will be attending some of those as well for this coming year. Um, and it was interesting that they brought some of the stuff up but then wouldn't attend and, and had meetings planned and then didn't show up. So I, I also want to let the committee know that I was part of that last May and uh, running into that festival um, so we would, and I'm sure uh, Daniel Bethel at the Chamber of Commerce would welcome anybody that has any uh, business along Cherry Avenue because it does, it, it's only a four day blockage. So most people can muddle through four days, but um, she has encouraged the businesses and folks that are affected by that to come to those meetings. Um, we just need to get them there. But, it, let, but let are we talking about the same, because it seems like the, the issue with the the businesses is different than what was mentioned here. In other words, if somebody's coming from Salem and trying to go to North Kaiser on foot or by bike, they have to kind of fight their way through that Cherry Avenue and River Road is an option, but mo for most people it's an uncomfortable option. So how do how does that person get passage through that area to to continue north like on Thorman I, or something I met like that. with the chamber in March and April to bring up this specific issue because with the Willamette Scenic Bikeway, we're having people from out of state, out of country using that facility. And I said, well, let's now develop a detour. And I gave them some ideas. I also said, how about bike racks? Well, I said, I can get them donated. Yeah, that I don't know. They, all, they, all, they, all, they blew me off, I'm sorry. The I thought we blew put, me off. I thought we put, I, I say we, but I, did we, I thought you maybe put a detour on a website that <coughs> took them down Cherry Thorman. Uh, that's, but. Or I mean, Cherry Alder Thorman and, and hit them mm -hmm. back up on Dearborn. That was my suggestion, but it didn't happen. Who was, who, uh, what website would we, would we have put that on? Well, the, one the is. Kaiser's it, website? It, it, is is we, we could have very easily said, you know, where the um, road closure was, was just before Orchid Way. Well, it was north of Orchid Way. It was, yeah, it was north of Alder. Yeah, it's north of Alder. Right. So as a cyclist coming in, you're being forced to turn to go onto River Road, which is not safe for cycling. We wanted a sign that says, proceed to Alder, and do a round to Cherry back on the scenic bikeway. I guess a detour signing, as you would do for vehicle traffic. So we don't do, we do not do detours for vehicle traffic. It's a four-day event, but um, I mean, so we don't do it for the, we don't do it for our Irish Festival, and we also don't do it for the 
for the Holiday Lights Parade. Mm -hmm. um, we're not necessarily opposed to the bicycle detours, but that's not something that probably Public Works or the Police Department's going to no, put but, up. No, but the Chamber could have done some signage. Yeah, but yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I'm just encouraging because I know I didn't real. I knew that you had had something like because we had talked a little bit about the detours. I, I had it with one of their representatives, and they said, "Oh yeah, yeah," and they didn't have bike racks, and I could have got them donated. Yeah. And uh, but the north, yeah, and it might be different. The northbound detour and the southbound detour might be different, but also Oregon Parks and Recreation Department should know. Ahead so of they time. can put that on because this, I had learned it. Uh, um, uh, Alex was still on staff there, and it, that was the point: is I can alert them, and they can put it on the statewide web. Uh, but that didn't happen. Beyond me. <laughs> <laughs> so, just well, it, it's on the record. <laughs> do we uh, need to contact the Iris Festival Committee and ask I, them to do some? Um, I, I don't want to detour signs or well we've requested it once and they didn't do All it can do. do it again yeah do it again. more specific <laughs> I know yeah. that with the Southeast Kaiser Neighborhood Association we are intending to be rather more uh, in the game this time and I did not know that there were any meetings with the chamber other than the one where someone came to us because I would have attended them when Ken could not because Ken has been out of out of commission for a lot of this last year right so, had I known that, I would have been there. So contact Daniel Bethel at the chamber. She's the executive director, and she can set those because they're, I don't believe they're closed meetings. I think they're open to anybody that has a vested interest in the, the planning or uh, input into it. Um, it's been known that the police department was not excited about having the festival at that intersection and at that location because Cherry being a, is a, an arterial or a minor arterial coming into River Road there. Um, so, but, I mean, we've been told that it's not moving. So... Um, but it is a clearly documentable major bike facility north for Kaiser, coming into Kaiser. It's not Verda, it's Cherry. And for both bicycle commuting, recreational cyclists, and long-distance touring. I'll, I'll go visit. Uh, we'll, we'll stay Danielle on it. <laughs> yeah. The bike club has a, a vested interest too. Okay. That's so our route for the Monster Cookie. Thank you, uh, Hirsch and Pat, for following up on that. <laughs> Kathy, do you have anything for the committee? Um, well, I, I mentioned already that the uh, regional transportation system plan is being oh, revised, and um, I just skimmed over the old one. Uh, week or so ago, and I sit on the SCATS, the policy committee that reviews that for, for, ch for chariots. I don't represent Kaiser. Um, but there were a number of uh, uh, items for, pedest for sidewalks in Kaiser. And I just thought um, right now there, we're going to have to be more specific about, I mean, just says like sidewalk improvements, $50,000. We're going to have to be more <laughs> specific about what, what's going to be done yeah. in the future. Mm -hmm. So. Um, uh, and I think Nate Brown and Bill Lawyer both sit on that committee for staff. Mm -hmm. But if they want any input from our group, I think we'd be willing prioritizing to. Prioritizing the different. Yeah, prioritizing or, um, you know, uh, probably mostly prioritizing, I guess. Because I know a lot of that's already in the transportation system plan, too, in just kind of general terms. You know, we're always looking for money to build more sidewalks. But um, I just thought, you know, we're, we're a resource if. The city needs it. Well, Kathy Clark sits on the committee too, so she she knows. But um, in case that issue comes up, Mike, you can let Bill know, and I don't know who lets Nate Nate Brown know. But I will put this in the minutes and highlight that part and send it to them. Okay, <laughs> great, <laughs> perfect. Thanks. Anything else? Uh, and I think that's all. Okay, Pat, do you have anything for the committee? Um, so my I. As you mentioned already, I was working on uh, completing that worksheet for the Cummings, uh, the Delight Street, um, Safe Routes to School application and met with Bill Lawyer with my draft and we went over some edits. So he, I made those changes and sent it to him yesterday. So I think he has the, the latest and greatest with, with everything except what uh, staff is going to 
complete. And I, so I was really happy to know that it was staff and not me that was going to do the online version. <laughs> and um, also, I guess I have uh, one other question. La last time, we another another uh, concern that was brought up, I think, out of the, the citizen, just a general citizen concern, was on where on that corner where Thorman curves in and becomes Manbrun, and it's between Adam and Eve. <laughs> and there was concern about um, parked cars on the in, inside of the curve, I think, as you're coming mm -hmm. southbound. Yeah. And uh, I drove that just in the, in the daylight, and uh, so it raised a question with me whether it would be worth it to just kind of paint an edge of lane stripes to keep, to kind of um, direct the motor vehicles, keep them sort of towards the center of the street there and maybe hash mark the first part of the curve so that they kind of get the idea to move over. Um, so that's just a question posed to, Mike. yeah, to Mike. Um, I'll talk to Bill about that. My first reaction is probably not, but um, I will talk with Bill, so. That's all. Thank you, Pat. Uh, David? Uh, Thank you for your information about Verda, that the, all the homework you did on that. Do you have anything else for the, oh, for yeah. the committee? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, finances. We have, as of yesterday, $1,497 in our account. That's good news. I have a helmet order I'd like approval for. <laughs> it orders... Um, Basically, it's a box of a small, medium, large toddler and extra large helmets. Comes to about $1,497. Comes, exact, <laughs> comes to exactly $862. <laughs> it's interesting, <clears throat> shipping is expensive. So what I really need to do is get an approval from the committee to give this to Bill to order. I make a motion that uh, we authorize David to submit the current order for helmets to Bill. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay, so go ahead and place your order. <coughs> we had a great time at the fire hall was last Monday night. We I mentioned that we, uh, um, Mike and Hirsch and his wife, and Wayne was there. We, uh, you know, I, I always look back and going, is that all we sold was 23 helmets? It was 115 bucks. No, it, it was that all. It seemed like we gave away 100 because we were so busy all at once. Yeah. And then... Uh, from six, from about six twenty till eight ten. Yeah, but the, but it died off pretty yeah. much about quarter to eight. So. For our audience at home, they're referring to the safety event at the fire station on October eighth, and the traffic committee, bikeway committee, was uh, providing uh, cycling helmets at five dollars a helmet. A donation. Donation, mm -hmm. or donation, and then we would fit the helmets onto the uh, recipients, the kids, uh, mostly kids. Uh, a few adults bought, bought helmets too. Smallest was 18 months old. Yeah, Whoa. yeah. Wow. we got a toddler. Toddler helmet. And that's for being in the walker. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, the other thing is the last thing. So anyway, that, taking care of that. Financially, we're in pretty good shape so far. Uh, I would like to make a, rec a request of the Salem Bike Club for a donation to this committee of $200 if I had the application form. Well, let me, let me uh, since I'm the president of the club, club. and <laughs> I just went through a, a, a financial um, thing this last Tuesday, the answer is probably no. Okay. But w if, if I'll get you the form and send it to me, and I'll figure out some way to get $200. Uh, well, whatever. Yeah. I, it was interesting. I was sitting here tinkering. It's assuming somebody gave us $200. Somebody off the street gives us $200. So we could buy about 25 helmets, counting shipping. Mm -hmm. But the 25 helmets generates another $125, which we could then buy 16 more helmets, 
which generates another 80 bucks. You get 10 more helmets. <laughs> and so it's, a, it's like a seed more than, so for 200 bucks, you end up getting 50 helmets. So this is- Or it ends up at an averaging out for the cost, about four bucks a helmet, considering they cost over eight, you know, eight something. Yeah. So this it's is the program a, that uses no tax money, strictly donation. Uh, the $5 um, donation for the helmet, as David says, really is good seed money. But if there are groups out there or individuals, um, we need your money so we can get more helmets. Uh, David and I were talking there at the event um, about how many helmets we have done oh, since geez. it started in 1997. We're guessing between five and 7,000 helmets for Kaiser kids. Wow. That's great. So, and it, this is the only program that's in the area that has the longevity. And we've had support of the fire department and the police department. Our um, police liaison, school liaisons, have been probably one of our primary sources of saying, I we need some helmets for these kids and, yeah, or this kid. Sometimes, so. sometimes we give the helmets away. If there's an emergent need, yes. Yeah, if people can't afford it. So. We did have some adults who bought helmets with the intention of uh, giving them to kids that they know. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. I was a little busy this last month. I was working on the worksheet for Kennedy Elementary for our Safe Routes to School proposal. And we got that uh, as complete as possible, and it's been sent in to Bill Lawyer, who will get the application done online. I've also requested uh, letters from uh, Christy Perry, school superintendent, for support for both projects, and she produced uh, letters for both projects. So I got that done, and I helped uh, fit some helmets at the safety fair. Okay, um, and we have our staff report. Uh, let's see, the contractor will be completing the Dearborn Bridge project by the end of this week, and the ribbon cutting ceremony to open the road is scheduled for next Tuesday at 9 a.m. So that's the big news. I want to be the first bike across. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anything else, Mike? No. Okay. Then we have our police uh, report, Trevor, please. So I mentioned last month that <clears throat> end of the year grants were uh, coming to a close September 30th. Uh, I sent out a press release today at about 11.55 uh, this morning explaining kind of what we did uh, during this past year. So we've written over 750 citations and warnings uh, covering the three grants, and I've got those broken down. We've made, uh, with our DUI grant specifically, one arrest for every seven hours of work. So when we break that down, our DUI, we have 55 hours of overtime. We wrote 119 citations and warnings, which sounds low, and I'll explain why. Uh, there were seven arrests for DUIs. We served six felony warrants. We had one felony lewd with misdemeanor charges on top of that. And the average citation uh, and warnings per hour work was 2.2 uh, per hour. <clears throat> keeping in mind that those numbers are low because when you do a DUI on the grant, the DUI will take you off the road for three to five hours because that's getting them into custody, towing their car, taking them to jail, coming back, and we are allowed to write reports on that grant time. Uh, the seatbelt, we had 44 hours of overtime, 158 citations, warnings, uh, citations and warnings were written. Average citation warning per hour work was 3.6, uh, so we're climbing up there a little bit. And then our speed grant, we had 68 hours of overtime, 367 citation warnings were written on overtime with an average of 5.4 written per every hour worked. Uh, we had 261 vehicles stopped during that time frame, uh, average uh, citation warning uh, per vehicle that was issued was 1.4, average vehicle stop per hour is about 3.8. And I'll explain those, um, why three is a kind of a magic number here in a little bit. And then part of that speed grant, we had to, to supplement that with um, straight time. 
And it's a little bit different with the DUI and the seatbelt. Uh, the straight time is a little bit different in how we have to document that. Uh, the speed grant is a little bit more intricate and more complex, so we actually have data for that. And then this next coming year, uh, all the grants are going to require what the speed grant required this year. So we had additional 27 and a half hours of straight time worked specifically dedicated solely to uh, speed enforcement, distracted driving, seatbelts, things of that nature. 113, site, uh, 113 sites and warns were um, written during that time with an average of about 4.1 per hour. And then we had 86 vehicles stopped during that time with an average citation warning ratio to 1.3. And then average vehicle stop uh, per hour is 3.1. And why you consistently see three pop up, if you think about, you know, the average stop taking anywhere from five to ten minutes, turning around, going set back up, waiting a few minutes, making that traffic stop, mm -hmm. getting done with that, coming back and sitting, you're really doing, um, it's like every ten minutes, you're either setting up or doing a citation, or doing a stop. And what we were doing is we were using discretion, and those that needed to have a citation received those. Uh, but a vast majority of those were warnings. Uh, on our speed grants, we didn't stop anything unless they were doing 10 miles over the speed limit, so we were not going after the 26 and a 25 or a 30 and a 25. They were 10 miles over the speed limit uh, before we were stopping them, and then slightly higher than that before we were issuing citations. So they were egregious uh, when, when we were issuing citations. So it was not just willy-nilly out there stopping everybody and everything. I will say... Uh, that none of those involved bicyclists. Um, so that's a good thing, I guess. So um, how does that compare with other places of this size? I mean, that seems like a lot of stops and a lot of citations. Is that, are our streets that dangerous <laughs> or is that? Keeping in mind, this, this, the grant period was from October 1st of 2017 to September 30th of 2018. So this is a 12-month period. So that's, honestly, um, those numbers are going to be much higher when our traffic team comes into play in most cases because we'll have dedicated officer. Let me, let me back up. The grants, those numbers are probably going to be consistent there, but the, the straight time work that a traffic team will do is going to be much higher. And to answer your question, yes, our streets are dangerous. And it's because we haven't had a traffic team, a traffic safety team in quite some time, okay. dedicated strictly to stopping motorists for the education value, for the warning value, for the citation value. Uh, and that's one of the things that I mentioned to Mayor Clark today in my email is that you know, this is a byproduct of not being out on the street and having a traffic safety. There's no repercussions. And people see that over time. Hmm. And it ebbs and flows. Um, what we're going to do right now, the police department is hearing a lot of chatter about how cars are just got awful fast on River Road, 50, 60 miles an hour. And there's no doubt that certain periods of the day that that's occurring. Um, people not, you know, stopping at stop signs. We heard Councillor Freeman mention that last month. And then the month before that in her email when she was talking uh, on National Night Out. So it's... It'll be interesting, uh, and in about a year's time, maybe even 18 months, we might start hearing chatter as like, holy cow, guys, give us a break. You know, <laughs> we, you slow down, you don't have to stop everybody and do, you know, um, you know, warn or cite everybody. But uh, yeah, the, the streets have increased. Um, we've seen a, a huge influx in motorcycle crashes that result in fatalities. We've one of the things, and I anticipated this question actually, and job, unfortunately, I was not, I didn't have enough time to collect the, uh, and collect the uh, data from our report writing systems on the crashes uh, for this last five years that we have not had a team to the five years that Sergeant Lede actually had the team and actually had motorcycles out on the roadway to include himself. Um, I would venture a guess that over the last five years that we've not had our team, our crash rates have increased. Oh, interesting. And we've, this committee and I have, we've done uh, specific data on intersections such as Sam Orkut and River Road and, and Wheatland Road. Um, but as a whole, as a city as a whole, I, I suspect, um, and I don't have the data today, uh, 
but I'm sure those numbers have gone up simply because, in, in part, I should say, that we just haven't had a traffic safety team. And that is changing. To add to your statement in there, during the five years that we had the motor program out, we actually had zero fatalities from traffic crashes. In the last five years, we've had six. Mm -hmm. Wow. Makes Here a, in Kaiser. Makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, another question. You didn't have a statistic, I don't think, on distracted driving. Um, no, is that... that that is part of, kind of so distracted driving is part of our seatbelt grant and okay. also part of our speed grant. Okay. And I did not, I did not break them down by violations, uh, but that's something that I, I have that in my office if that needs to, if you want to review that. I just, because that's such a big deal, mm -hmm. I think. It is. And it is uh, for myself when I was working the grant during the summertime, uh, I would spend my time, I could easily, easily write citations for speed and just as easily change my location and concentrate on distracted driving huh. and I'd stay I could stay busy you know five days a week ten hours a day gosh I never do this who all is doing this <laughs> <laughs> so and lastly I just want to thank you folks for allowing me to sit on the committee um, I appreciate my time here I know you're gonna be in good hands with Sergeant Dave Lede. Um he's done this a lot longer than I have I know Hirsch has worked with him. I'm not sure if maybe David has worked with him as well. Um, so you, you know, some of you know what you're getting into. Others of you, well, <laughs> good luck. But uh, he's a great guy. He's wealth of knowledge um, and knows traffic safety inside and out a lot more so than I do. So you'll be in good hands. Thank you for well, all I your time. Well, I want to really thank you because you've been awesome to work with. Thank you. Okay. We won't have a council liaison report tonight unless you've got something. I do have something. In front of you all, you have one of these little things right here. I have several cards. If you are going somewhere where you're going to be at meetings or someplace where you can share them, take as many as you need. We need uh, one. We have one position open on the Points of Interest Committee, two on the Arts Commission, two on the Parks Board, and David's not coming back. Uh, his term ends at uh, the end of December, so we have an opening there. <coughs> okay, thank you, Debbie. Thank now, you for... Is, isn't David's position uh, the bike position? Uh, there's enough bikers on all of this. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's, well, remember when I first came on, it, it, yeah, it was yeah, real they're, specific. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. So I think we all ride bikes, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's all I have. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, uh, Carl, for your input. Thank you, Officer Lede, for coming, and we look forward to... Uh, Hearing more from you, we are adjourned.